Hey, what's up? Nathan here from P8 Studios. Welcome back to another tutorial from the XNA series. And in this tutorial, I want to talk about how to change the volume of a globally changed volume of, let's say, all your music just by manipulating a variable. And we can do this with a slider or a keyboard press. And I did a keyboard press for the sample. I didn't go that far into creating a slider and things like that. Okay, so last tutorial we talked about the exact tool, the XACT tool, and how to create a project and how to build it. Now I you can link the exact tool the exact project into the Solution Explorer and you can have XNA build it for you instead. But if you're like me and you want to provide a sample to people and you do not want to have access to the raw sound files, I'm sure you can get access to these somehow by exporting them or getting them somehow from these files, but it's a little bit more more difficult to have somebody have access to your WAV files and just giving them a WAV file so if you want to provide your sample and you do not want to have, to have them have access to your WAV or mp3 files you want to build them with the exact tool like we did previous tutorial and then just link your engine sound bank and WAV bank inside of here now if you do it this way like I did it I built it with the exact tool and I linked the individual files in here. I put them in my content sub project. If you do it this way, you need to select all three of them. You need to change the build action to none and the copy to output directory as copy always or copy if newer, whichever one you prefer. Just make sure they're at build action none and somehow they are copied to the output directory because they are already they are already built we do not need to rebuild them again it doesn't know how so we just change that to none and we want to copy it in the directory so we can load it into our project okay so once we have our engine that's what this GXGS is called the engine the sound bank and the wave bank once we have those three files you need all three files somehow loaded into our project I preferably the content sub project we need to manipulate the game onecs file and we need to create an audio engine wave bank and a sound bank object I also created a current song, a Q object called current song. So we can just remember what song is currently playing. And to load the content, I use the audio engine is equal to new audio engine. And since they're in the content sub project, you simply use content.root directory plus slash audio tutorial xgs. New wave bank and new sound bank, these need the audio engines, the audio engine object that you created here, and do the same thing content.root directory plus wave bank.xwb and sound bank.xsb. Okay, now current song, I decided to play the menu at the very beginning, so I just created a current song Q object and to get the Q you call soundbank.getQ and remember the last tutorial when we created our Q's this is where you'll need to type in the Q name so you don't want you do not want to have it like 50 character Q name you want it to be very short okay this is a menu Q so I know it's gonna be menu song and once I get that Q object, I can say Q object dot play and it'll play the song. Now by default it'll play at 100% so I set the settings dot music volume to 
1.0f float value. And the settings are here, it's just a static class with a static float value music volume. And then a load of sprite fonts so we can display, you know, press up to increase the music volume, press down to decrease the music volume, press space to change it, and stuff like that. All right, so if we press the up key, it's gonna increase the music volume by 0 0.01 float. And if it's above one, the music value needs to be between zero and one. If it's above one, we need to set it to one. And this is where we use the categories. So you can have multiple music categories and you can change music from one category but leave music from another category 100% and that'll achieve your desired result. But for this tutorial, I linked both the sound files to one music category. So both sound, both music files will be affected by this change. So we call audioengine.getCategory what we named our category, which is music, dot set the volume, and we'll set it using the settings dot music volume. Uh, similarly with the keys dot down, we want to decrease the volume, and if it's below zero, we need to set it to zero. It cannot be a negative value. Okay, now if we press the space key, we want to switch songs. And what we do here is we call current song dot stop and we want it to stop immediately. All right, now if the current song is named menu, so the menu is playing, we want to load the uh, loop song, which I call play in this sample. Uh, because it's like a play song, things like that. So if it's the menu song, we want to load the play song. If it's a play song, we want to load the menu song. And then we play the current song after it's loaded. Uh, just a strain builder to show us what keys we need to press and what the current song that is currently playing, what's the name of it, and things like that. What's the music level volume? And just the information to display to the user. All right, so let's press F5 and see the result. All right, so now the music is playing. It's currently at 100%, so if I press the down key, you can hear it get quieter. Now, like I said, you can link this to a slider in your options menu. But for this sample, I just linked it to the up and down keys. Press space to change the current song. Space again. All right. So that's pretty much it. You need to use categories. Well, in this sample, I used categories. There's one other way you can do it. Uh, but categories seems to be the easiest one. And then you need to get the category, audio engine dot get category. You need to give it the name of the category you want to get. Then you call dot set volume, and you need to pass it a float value between zero and one. And that's how you change volume for a for all the sound files that are linked to a category. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, next tutorial, it's going to be a, either in the middle of the week or there will be another three tutorial weekend, and it's going to be a update to the screen system. There was a request made that I update the screen system to allow when a menu needs to throw a sub menu a way to transition between the two. 
like you want the menu system to kind of fade away or you do not want a bunch of menu items to be displayed when you have a sub menu above it. So maybe you want those menu items to fly to the left out of the game window and things like that. So I will be creating a transition for when a menu throws a sub menu and I'll create a tutorial on how to use that. So that's it for these two XNA tutorials. There will be one more tutorial this weekend which is a GarageBand tutorial and I'll just briefly discuss a song I made using uh, the piano roll and I'll just briefly discuss that and then the next GarageBand tutorial will be a how do I create a song just using the piano roll. So stay tuned for that.